Hello and welcome back once again. Today we want to talk about QNAP NAS Container Station Secrets. QNAP is widely regarded as a network attached storage device. However, the QNAP strength is as an application server running containers. Virtualization Station is an application that is a QEMU front end handling their virtual machines. Container Station provides support for Docker, LexC, and now LexD containers. QNAP has announced that LexC container support will end by the end of 2021. LexD is layered upon and relies upon LexC. So QTS5 container station changes. QTS5 now supports kernel version 5.10.60, which has support for cgroups and WireGuard. LexC and LexD can now support Docker containers nested inside of them. And QTS5 supports LexC commands at the command line. So here's an example here where I've done a uname A and you can see the kernel version. And then I've done a LexC list and it's listed out um, my containers. So there are several container station inconsistencies that we're going to want to talk about and examine in this video. The container station CLI uh, that you saw in the previous screen, LexC commands, can only see and control LexD containers. <clears throat> the LexC containers, on the other hand, interestingly, are not visible. As of June 2021, a new version of Container Station um, removed LexC containers and they were no longer listed in the Create menu. Existing LexC images can be used to create new LexC containers and Container Station can import exported LexC containers to create new LexC containers. The container station import export command only shows Docker and LexC containers and does not show LexD. So what kind of LexD differences are we looking at? Well, container station LexC consoles are signed on to the Ubuntu account with password Ubuntu. Container Station LexD consoles provide no default account. They instead provide a username prompt. You must choose the terminal option on the LexD console screen and then open a shell and create your own account. LexC containers let you assign a static address on the bridged adapter interface in the Container Station GUI. LexD containers network settings let you bridge just like you can in a LexC container, but you can get the mis you get this misleading uh, message that says use a virtual switch to give each container a unique IP address. This setting may change the NAS IP address. I don't think even QNAP knows what that means. And then LexD container bridge addresses are set either by DHCP reservation at your network end or by configuring the IP address inside of the container operating system. There's no way to back up LexD containers in Container Station. In other words, there's no import export capability. Okay, so here I'm in the container station screen, you can see that I have two LexC containers, I have one LexD container, and I have one Docker container. So let's go down to the command prompt and let's go ahead and connect to the SSH console of the QNAP. 
And you can see that I can do a Docker PS and I can list out the <clears throat> one your backup container that I have out here that corresponds to this your backup server. I can also do a C list and you can see that I have one test container running the Lexi list lists the test container. If we go back here to container station, you'll see that I actually have two Lexi containers running and only one LexD that's called test. So we can conclude that the Lexi command manages the LexD containers, but it does not see the Lexi containers for some reason. That I find kind of interesting. So <clears throat> something else we can do here, which is kind of interesting, is we can do a docker volume create portainer. And then we can do a docker run that will point to that portainer volume and use the docker or that rather the portainer ce image and it goes ahead and executes that image if we go back to the container station you can see that i'm now running a portainer image so this portainer image is pointing to the IP address of the NAS at port 9000. And if I click on it, there you go. I've got a uh, login for Portainer. I'll go ahead and put this in the show notes, uh, but that's a description of the fact that you could use Portainer to manage your Docker containers as well. Anyway, the main focus of this um, <clears throat> presentation was a little bit more about the Lexi and LexD differences. So if we click on create here and we scroll down to the bottom, it used to be in the previous version of Lexi or the previous version of Container Station, we would see Lexi containers listed at the bottom and you could go ahead and create a Lexi container. Well, those are no longer there. What we can do, though, is we can go into images and we can see that I've got other Lex C images. There's Lex D images. But if I scroll down, I guess I don't actually have any over here. Um, I've got some on my other NAS. But anyway, if you had Lex C images here, you could create a new container with the Lex C image. So barring that, if I want another LexC container, I could do an import. And I can say, go ahead and import. And I have this directory called container. And I have this Ubuntu 2004 tar. I can go next. And even though this version of container station doesn't really support LexC containers, I can create a LexC container. So I can say, um, video test Lexi and I'll create this thing with a CPU cap of 20% and memory of 4096 now let's go to advanced settings under advanced settings um, the IP or the MAC address is grayed out if I wanted to have the same MAC address every time I hit this refresh and once it's bolded here you know that every time container station reboots it'll get the same MAC address for this particular container. Well, my options here on network mode are either NAT or bridge. I usually prefer bridge because I like to, produce, I like to present my uh, containers out on the network just as though they were individual servers. So um, we have this option here where it says use DHCP and, it, and for some reason, 
they've added this um, <clears throat> unusual message that I don't understand from QNAP that says, use a virtual switch to give each container a unique IP address. This setting may change the NAS IP address. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead in this particular case and I'm going to go down here and I can, with my bridged option, I have an option to create this container anywhere I want. So I'm going to go ahead and create it on this LabNet network. I'm going to say use a static address. And you see that I can choose my static address on that network. So I could say like um, <clears throat> statically address this container at 192.168.50.222. I go off and I create the container and it's actually going to import that previously exported container. And it's going to, from that container image, it's going to create a new image, a new container, not a new image, a new container from that image. And <clears throat> that will be my new Lexi container. So you can also see it up here as continuing and it says completed. So now I go to overview and there's my container called Video Test Lexi. If I click on it, I have in the console a dollar sign prompt. I'm going to go ahead and make that bigger. I have a dollar sign prompt because it's logged into the console. If I do an if config, you can see that it's running at 192.168.50.222. So this, this uh, container is ready to go. So in contrast to that, I'll show you how you create a Lex D container. So you do a create, and unlike Lex C, you can't really go down through this list and find a Lex D container as one of their templates that's listed in this create window. Instead, we have to type in the type. So I'm going to say that I want an Ubuntu container. And I'll click the question, the, uh, the, the uh, magnifying glass to go do the search. <clears throat> and you have several headings across here. Recommended, it'll go out and say, well, we've found a Docker container for Ubuntu and we found some other things. Um, and local is always copies of things that you have locally, local images you previously downloaded. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on this thing called LexD Image Server. So this is an internet-based image server, and it gives you the images of all the LexD containers that you can create. So I'll go ahead and create a full sulfaca con a full sulfa Focal FASA container, let's get that right 10 times real fast, right? Go create a container, um, and that's Ubuntu 2004. So I click on create install, and after I click on install, I'll just say um, uh, video LexD test. And we'll go ahead and say, yeah, we'll put a CPU cap of 20% on this. And just like before, we'll say 2 gigs of memory. And these are just caps. They're not the amount of memory they use. Now let's go click on advanced settings for it. So again, our MAC address is grayed out. So we want it to get the same MAC address every time. So we hit the refresh, get a new MAC address. And over here on network mode, it's NAT. Well, we want to do bridged. So I click on Bridged, and now I have the same drop-down menu, which gives me the adapter. So we'll go back to the LabNet network, and we get the same message. It says, use a virtual switch to give each container a unique IP address. This setting may change the NAS IP address. So, you know, I don't understand that, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but one thing you'll notice curiously lacking from this is the ability to set an IP address in here. So we're going to come back to that in a second. But on the left side here, the next option besides network is device. I didn't go to the device tab on the Lexi container, but had I done that, there, wasn't, there would not be a run containers in privilege mode checkbox there. Here there is. And unless you check this box, 
you're not going to be able to start your LexD container. So you have to remember to check this box. If you don't check this box and you create the container, it will create the container and it will show an error. And then just like with, with uh, other types of containers like LexC and Docker containers, we could mount folders externally outside, but I'm not doing that. LexC containers have their own file system and it is persistent, unlike Docker. At Docker, you always end up mounting containers outside the or folders outside the container because we need to access data that is persistent. So in any case, we now have this device, we now have this container, and I'll say create this LexD container. So go back to overview, go up here to our process. It says I'm creating this video. LexD test container, it's created. If I look at video LexD test, sure enough, it says in amber there that it's a LexD. Now, if we click on this thing, it comes up, but it gives us a login prompt. And unlike LexC containers that defaulted to Ubuntu, if we type Ubuntu and Ubuntu here, Ubuntu for the username and Ubuntu for the password. It comes back and says login is incorrect because we don't have any default username for LexD containers. So instead of that, up here we've got a terminal um, prompt. If we click the terminal prompt, it comes up and it's actually grayed out. It looks like it's typed in, but it says slash bin slash sh. It's kind of just a prompt to let you know that to start a shell, you would say slash bin slash sh. So this is going to start a regular shell. It's going to open another. Um, it's going to open another tab in my web browser, and give me a pound sign prompt, which is actually a root login for that LexD container we just created. So I'm just going to go ahead and do an add user. I don't have to do a sudo because we're already in root. I'm going to say add user Scott. And I'm going to go ahead and give Scott a password. And I'm going to go ahead and do a user mod dash A capital G sudo Scott. So I'm just putting Scott in the sudo group. And then I'll go ahead and do an apt install open ssh dash server so i'm now adding the open ssh server so that i can ssh to this lexd container now normally you'd also have to do a uh, install of that to get to the lexd container also so that's really no different than it would be for the lexd container all right so now we have our open ssh server installed just for fun, I'm going to do an apt install net-tools. And <clears throat> net-tools gives us the command where I can say um, if config. Because remember, you I, I, I pointed out that this thing creates a DHCP address. So here we go. We're running at 192.168.50.113. Okay, so now we can open a terminal and we can say ssh to scott at 192.168.50. What did we say? 50.113. And we can say, yeah, we'll create a new fingerprint for that and type in the password. And there we go. We're signed on to Ubuntu 20.04 and it's a LexD container and we're logged in to the prompt. So at this point in time, it behaves like all others, except that it has a DHCP address. So either I would have had to go in and modify the, um, <clears throat> modify it, make it have a static address uh, inside the operating system here, or I could go out to my um, network management 
and give this thing a DHCP address reservation. I mean, part of the reason for that is because we would want to have all of our containers running at a static address because they'll have applications on them and we don't want them to change address. So it'd be more convenient to not have them. So my thing is I would say that it's better to do DHCP address reservations. Okay, so here we are back at Container Station looking at the Video Lex D test. And at this point, we can also sign in through the console here by typing in the username Scott and the password. And of course, it logs in here as well. So the other thing I want to look at is I want to go back to Overview and I want to click on Export because we want to be able to make backups of these containers. So I'm going to say Export Container. I'm going to click the drop down and I have a choice of backing up my portainer. I have an option of backing up my your backup server. Both of those were Docker containers and these first three up here are Lexi containers. So remember that I've got two Lexd containers in the overview. I have the Lexd called test and I have the Lexd called video Lexd test. And when we do the export, you'll notice that neither of those containers are available for export. Now QNAP is working on this. They promise they'll give an export capability later. We sure hope so because not being able to make a backup of a container is kind of a major problem. All right, so back here on our container station interface, again, we can see we have a LexD container called test and a LexD container called video LexD test. If we go down to the command prompt, we can do a LexC list and you can see that I have test and video LexD test. So both of the LexD containers are listed. Now, we do have a command line capability to do a Lexc export for the container video Lexd test, and I'm placing it on share backups video Lexd test dot tar. So on the QNAP, if we go to File Station, that file is going to appear here. If I do a repaint, you can probably see it being created. Not quite yet, but it will be in a minute. So we will have a backup file over here on slash share backups. Okay, so now our backup is completed successfully. If we go up to the QNAP and go to File Station and do a refresh, you will see that we have a video lexd test.tar. So that's our backup file of our lexd container. So there's our lexd container in Container Station video lexd test. Now, Suppose we want to import that container. Well, go ahead and we'll do an import command. This is a lexc import on slash share slash backups, our tar file, and the imported container I want to be called imported lexd. And you can see it's completed. Now, if we go back to Container Station, there is a container called Imported LexD. It's not running right now, but if I click on it, it will tell me that it has an error opening uh, because it's having a hard time pointing to the file and directory. But I found that if I start it, it will in fact start up. To prove this, um, it's interesting because Imported LexD is the name of the container, but you can see that it retains the old name of the system, which isn't surprising because it's an exact copy. If I type in my username and my password that I created, 
I'm able to log in. So there we have the container. And if I do an if config, you'll see that it's not getting an IP address. And the reason it's not getting an IP address is because it's an exact copy in every way. It's even an exact copy of the MAC address. So it's probably not a good thing to do it this way, but it is a way to back up and have a file backup of any LexD container you've built in the interim until QNAP comes up with a methodology to do backups. So I'm going to stop this container and I'm going to go ahead and remove this container. <clears throat> but that should show that we're able to do a backup and a recovery of a container from the command line. Okay, so in summary, we learned that Container Station does not handle LexD containers the same as it handles LexC containers. The QNAP NAS command line provides the Docker command to manage Docker containers so you can install Portainer to manage Docker containers as a secondary capability. And LexD containers do not have a default user account. You have to create one. QNAP ACL settings require you to specify run containers in privilege mode in the device section of advanced options when creating your LexD container. And the QNAP command line provides the LexC interface which manages LexD containers. The LexC command line can back up LexD containers until Container Station supports import and export for LexD containers. So thank you for watching today and please subscribe and like and we'll see you on down the road.